far from your grace. Welcome to Recovery Radio, where we have hope for you today. When I was the lost soul searching, you were the ground beneath my feet. When I was the blind man begging, you were the eye so I could see. Good day, everybody. Hey, I'm your host, John, and I'm here today with Robert in the studio. Good morning, Robert. Hey, good morning, John. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> another great day. Another great day. Yes. And I'm surprised Robert's even being able to walk today. He was, <laughs> he was bowling last night like a madman. Yeah. How many strikes in a row did you have there? My last game, I closed the game with five strikes in a row. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. to prove it. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> and uh, we have Bill in the studio. You're Woo! our engineer. Good keeping morning. Keeping us on track. Good morning, Good Bill. morning Bill. Um, hey, everybody, I just want you to uh, keep in mind, uh, keep keep Bill and his family in your prayers. Yes. His uh, mother-in-law passed this last week, um, so they need to be lifted up. And um, she was a she was a believer and follower in Christ, so they will meet again. More than Amen. 45 years. Oh, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, so she's doing always, well. Oh, yeah. We can always yeah, rejoice she's in that. She's doing better than we are. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Praise <laughs> God for that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hey, Robert, would you like to uh, open us in prayer? Speaking yes, prayer? sir. We'll Thank definitely you. do that. Hey, wherever you guys are, just, just by your hearts, by your, your mind, and let's go before the Father. Father God, we come boldly in the name of Jesus Christ, Father. We just want to lift you up today. We want to give you all the praise, honor, and glory just because of who you are, Lord. Even if you don't do anything else for us, uh, you still deserve all the praise just, just because of you being almighty God. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the testimony that's going forth today, Lord. I pray that it goes forth and changes somebody's life, Lord. Um, Lord, we just we look forward to the phone calls that we're going to get. Lord, people calling in and letting us know that, uh, hey, you know, I'm dealing with that, too. Or I have dealt with that. Help us to be able to help somebody else today, Lord. We love you. We praise you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Yeah, I don't know if uh, everybody out there in the listening audience had a week like I had. Oh, boy, but was it a week? It was the week. <laughs> it was just... Yeah, everything everything that could go wrong went wrong this week. Um, it was just very hectic. It was a crazy week. Yeah, okay. Um, but I just want everybody to know, you know, just take some time. Uh, if you haven't already, just take some time and turn everything over. Um, shut the mind off for a little bit and just, yeah. just focus on God and focus on what he's done for us. And even through all, all the stuff that I went through this week, it's nothing. Nothing That's in right. comparison to New Attorney. It's a blip. Yeah. You know, and I had to constantly look back on that because that's one of the things I struggle with in life is that control <laughs> issue. Always what? trying to take control of everything. And then when it doesn't go the way I want it to go, yep, <laughs> the frustration sets in. We yeah. wound up having a bad week. Oh, you got it. That's exactly what happened. Well, praise God. Look, yeah. look where you're at now. <laughs> there you you're go. You're sitting here talking about it. Go. That's gone now. Yes, that's it is. Gone. It but is. You gave it to Jesus, man. Mm hmm. Oh, it's so hard. You want to keep a hold of those reins, though. Yeah. It is really hard to let go. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, just leave it. Yeah. Let it go. Be hey, like, but no, but I wanted this. We're, and we're I guys. That. Yeah. We're fixtures and we oh, want stuff. That's you it. Know, it's it's Always, a guy thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and trying to fix stuff this week. Yes. And I did throw my back out this week and doing everything that I wanted to do. So, yeah, I'm doing really good. <laughs> yeah, my goodness. So it's crazy. So, hey, um, this show, I just want to tell you, you know, this is for you. And we say that every week. You always hear Mike say that. Uh, but we'd really like to hear from you. You know yeah. who we are. You hear us every week. We'd like to know who you are. We'd love for you to call in and uh, just, just say hey. Just say hi. Um, you know, tell us what's on your mind. Tell us yeah. what's going on in your life. Tell us how Jesus is working in your life. Or if, if you're looking for answers, you're looking for a way to turn your life over to Christ, give us a call. Yeah. Um, we have people on the phone here that will be able to talk to you. Um, you don't necessarily have to talk to us. You can talk to them. Yeah. And they can explain to you this, this wonderful salvation and life we're living now, how we turned it over, and um, working through that and um, tell you how to, how to meet Jesus and talk to him yeah. and um, lead you to that road of salvation. Also, man, like just what you just did was a great example. If yeah. you guys have a praise report, yeah, maybe you went through something this week and you remembered at some point, hey, let me give it to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you're still here to talk about it. Hey, call in and let us know about that, too. Exactly. Maybe that even something as, as seemingly small as that can be big in somebody else's mm -hmm. life. Amen. Amen. So the number, 800-721-9348. Seven two one nine three one three. Give us a call. That's right. Yes. Um, and 
with that, I would like to send out a shout out. Robert would like to send a shout out to our sponsors who keep this radio station going and yeah. keep us on the air so we can talk to you every day. Yeah, man. So yeah. Uh, first, let's start out with uh, Ohana Poke Bowl. Um, they're located here in Lake Havasu City at 3269 Maricopa Avenue. Uh, we also have Ace Pest Control. You can contact them at 928-680-0988 and even on the web at acepestcontrolaz.com. Uh, finally, we have Sunshine RV at 2995 Maricopa Avenue here in Lake Havasu City. And you can call them at 928-855-6648. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And, of course, we also have the air team members that keep KNLB going. Um, We really appreciate everything you're doing and your monthly donations and your contributions. Uh, Keep this radio station transmitting and going out there. Um, Reaching all the ends of the world, just not through transmission, but also through streaming online. Uh, KNLB.com. You can go on there and listen live as well. So if you're traveling around and want to listen, if you have a computer or a device, and you can get online. There you go. You You cannot escape us. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) Like they want to. They don't want to escape us. No, no, no. No, no, no. They need that. People want to listen. They need that that, that lift every day. You you have to to stay plugged in and connected, or you can easily fall back into the ways of the world. Easily. And, yeah, what you've done in the past. Yes, sir. Yeah. So anyway, um, let me tell you a little bit about uh, what what Recovery Radio is. Um, You're probably going, what are these guys talking about? They're a bunch of crazy guys. (laughs) Every week, come on the radio and just start yakking. (laughs) All right. So what we're here for (laughs) is we're here to just let you know you're not alone. There is nothing new under the sun. That's right. You know, and we all go through the same things. I don't care if you're putting on a persona that your life is perfect and everything's wonderful. Mm-hmm. You know, it may be in your mind. You might might not think you have any issues whatsoever. Yeah. But I can tell you, since the beginning of time, if you look at the Bible, one of my best examples I have for you is looking at the Bible. Mm-hmm. It was good for the first three chapters. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Uh-huh. <laughs> then, then, yeah, then we've that needed, was it. <laughs> ever since, ever since then, we've needed recovery, <laughs> that's and that's right. what recovery is about. Recovery is is uh, getting that relationship back with our Lord and our Savior, that's right. Jesus Christ, and restoring that. That's what it is about. Yeah. Don't think, don't think the persona you're thinking recovery. Oh, that's for those people who are dealing with <clears throat> drugs and alcohol. Yeah, that's part of it. Yeah. But it's not all of it. Yeah. You know, the recovery is for everybody. We are all trying to get that relationship back. We are trying. And that's what Jesus came to this planet to do. You know, he came back to this earth to to restore that relationship. That's right. And that's what his whole purpose was for everything he went through, everything he did, and dying on the cross. Mm-hmm. And then resurrecting in three days and that's coming right. back. That's he was trying to restore that relationship. And that's what it's all for. And that's what it's all about. Amen. So that's what we're here for. Yeah, that's we're right. here for you guys. <clears throat> that's right. And, um... To go along with that, we just want to remind you that we're here to support one another. And uh, we're not here to fix you because we can't do that. The only one that has that power is Jesus Christ. Um, And the Bible states that we're to share each other's burdens, to come together, to encourage one another, to build each other up, and to lift one another up in prayer. Mm -hmm. And if you're a prayer warrior, even if you're not, the least that you can do for somebody is pray for them. Mm -hmm. You know, and it doesn't take a whole lot to talk to God for somebody. It's called intercession Mm -hmm. and everybody can do it. Amen. That's yeah, so true. A lot of people think you have to have some kind of way to talk to God. You know, (laughs) talk to God like we're talking to each other. Exactly. That's what he wants. (laughs) Yeah. He just wants to know. It's it's that father child relationship type of of example. He wants to be able to just talk to me. Yeah. Let me know. You know, we're so pulled into ourselves and so isolated that we don't we don't like to talk to each other yeah. let alone talk to god yeah. you know so uh but that's what he wants he wants that relationship it's all about that and that's what he's looking for amen yeah hey. <laughs> voices from the background <laughs> uh, Lord, is that you? yeah sometimes you wonder hey robert what do we have for a scripture today yeah we're going to come out of uh first peter chapter 2 verses 9 through 10 uh, and it reads, um, you have been chosen by God himself. I, I could stop right there. There you I go. <laughs> <laughs> but I repeat, you have been chosen by God himself. You are priests of the king. You are God's very own. All this, all this so you may have 
have to show others how God called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were less than nothing, now you are God's own. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. It was, it was all on that first verse. Yeah. I was like, hey. yeah. And we're all chosen. Amen. All of us. That's every right. Every one of us. It's just a matter if you're willing to hear the call. That's right. And respond to that call. That's the big thing. Yep. You know, I have a lot of people out there that say, they, oh, yeah, I, I believe, but they don't respond to the call. Yeah. It's like if somebody has a gift for you, right? You still have to receive right. that gift. Right. I got this wonderful gift for you. And, and you can say, eh, okay, I know there's a gift I there. I believe you got the gift. That's there. Yeah. But you have to still receive that gift. That's right. And that's what it's about. And that takes action. Do. Yes, it exactly. takes action. Reach out and uh -huh. receive it. And that's it. So that's what you need to do. And you can't receive it if you're holding on to something else. <sighs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. We were going through. Open those hands. Open there you up. go. Open them up. Yeah. And we were, going through, um, we were going through a study of Mark. And you probably heard me talk about, you know, if you're looking at the Bible the first time, you have no idea where to start or what to do with it. A Mark is a good place to start. A lot of people say John because John starts with, you know, in the beginning, yeah. you know, but, but Mark, Mark was writing down everything. He, he didn't walk with Jesus, but he wrote down what he was taught from, I'm going to forget his name, Peter, yeah. Peter. Yeah. Peter. <laughs> okay. So he was writing down what Peter and Peter was walking with Christ and he wrote down everything that was going on. But Mark was very much an action hero type of guy. That's right. Action packed. And we just laugh because as you're reading through, <laughs> as you're reading through Mark, as you're reading through Mark, he says immediately, huh. like every other line, yeah. immediately God went into the synagogue, immediately God healed them, immediately you know Christ did this, immediately He went here, you know. So it's just it's just funny as you're reading through it just to get that. But one of the things that jumped out today as we were going through the study, we're talking about how Jesus talks. It seems like it's kind of disjointed and out of place where He puts it. But he talks about how Jesus talks um, kind of like in a metaphor. He talks about putting a new patch yeah. on old cloth right. and how that patch will pull away and destroy the garment. Right. He also talks about putting new wine in, in old, old wine bags. skins. And then we're like, what? And you really look at what does that mean? Yeah. What is that? And, and we started really looking into it. And it's kind of like that's what happens when you accept Christ. Yeah. Right? Okay, you were an old wine skin. Well, now you're new. So now you're going to put new things in it. So why would you want to return to the old wine skin and put something new that you've learned back into that old wine skin? Right. Well, you or know, the, the other thing with that is, is yeah. uh, you, you can't put new patches on old clothes yeah, because that too. after you wash it, that patch will yep. shrink up and it'll do more damage. It destroys it. And the same with the old wine skins. Mm -hmm. so you put new wine in this old wine skin, yeah. well, that wine skin is going to burst. Exactly. And also, it's all about the new. You and know, that's but kind you of what mix it. You can't yeah. mix the old and new. And that's kind of what people try to do when they accept Christ. <laughs> Come on, Jeff. They're Ooh. comfortable. <laughs> they're they're comfortable <laughs> with their old life. They want to keep a hold of that old life, but they yeah. got something new. <clears throat> And they keep trying to plug the new into the old, and it destroys, it implodes. Yeah. It blows up. It does whatever. You can't do that. Yeah. You know, that's, that's kind of what he was getting at Amen. when he talked in there. And it just seems kind of like, why is he talking about clothing and patches and wineskins <laughs> and exploding wineskins here? You know, but you really look at it, and that's kind of what he's getting at with the Pharisees when yeah. he's talking to them. And, and, and just a, <laughs> Yeah, just a reminder for, for the people, yeah. and Christ spoke in parables. Yeah. And all a parable is, is Christ take a spiritual mm -hmm. truth. And yes. he explains it through something natural that we can understand. Yeah, we because get. Christ, remember, his ways are not our ways. Oh, that's it. You know, they're way higher. Yeah. So he had to break it down for us to mm -hmm. understand. So It's like when you talk to your children. <laughs> you have to bring it down to their level so they Ooh. can understand what you're trying to say to them. And that's what he's doing with us. I need Christ's uh, <laughs> patience for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Hey, well, we do have a, <laughs> as I'm yakking on here, sorry, I'm starting to sound like Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hope everything's good and Florida. <laughs> Raining yet? Yeah. Is it humid? <laughs> no, no, but Hurricane Mike is down there. There you go. <laughs> That's it. Poor Polly. <laughs> we'll pray for her. Yes. There she you needs go. it. <laughs> Again, we oh, love. I just got a text. Oh, no, I'm there kidding. <laughs> Again, we'd love to hear from you. Please give us a call um, to about anything, 
nine three one three. And I would love to introduce our guest today. Ooh. A very she's special. She's kind of special guest. to you. Isn't she is she? very <laughs> special to me. Yeah. She, yeah. She is a blessing from God. Amen. Uh, to all of us. Yeah. But, she's but to me you. especially, yes, <laughs> very much. And that is a whole other story in of itself. Amen. But we won't go there because we're here to talk about Terry. Woo! Hi, Terry. Hey, good morning. Hey. Yeah, you've heard her before. She's been on She's been on the show a couple times. She is our social media expert. She's the Guru. One, guru. <laughs> oh, guru. She's the one that uh, does all the Facebook and Twitter and Whatever else. <laughs> I can't even New remember everything stuff. she does. Yeah, all that fangled stuff. <laughs> all electronics. All <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what she went to school for. There's, right. Uh, <laughs> not, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Terry's, Terry's going to do something. We're going to do something a little different today. She is actually going to open today with a devotional. Okay. Okay. This is a devotional that uh, we read over breakfast this morning, and it just happened. The scripture just happens to be out of Mark, so I'm going to read that and then read the devotional. Uh, it says, "And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, <laughs> turned around in the crowd and said, "Who touched my clothes?" And he said to her, "Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction." People were pushing, shoving, shouting, calling out to Jesus as he made his way through the, through the tumultuous sea of humanity thronging Capernaum streets that day. But it was the timid touch of an emaciated hand which stopped him in his tracks. He quickly discovered, I'm sorry, he quickly turned to discover the recipient of the power which had gone from him. She was instantly healed when she touched his garment. The woman might easily have slipped back into the crowd and gone her way. But Jesus needed, needed to help her understand what had brought about her healing. He made it very clear it wasn't the fingers and it wasn't the fringe. It was her faith that made her whole. Hers was only a weak little faith bordering on superstition. Yet there was faith and she placed it on the only one who had the power to heal her. Even in all the crowd and commotion, Jesus knew when she touched him specifically. He's a sensitive savior. Don't think he's so busy running the universe that he doesn't know everything about you right now. Whenever you reach out to him, he'll respond to you as though you're the only one around. Others that day needed to see the miracle that was done for this woman. Remember, Jesus was going with a man named Jairus to help his dying daughter. Don't you think seeing this bolstered his faith and greatly increased his hope for his daughter? That's one reason it was important for the woman to openly confess what had happened to her. What happened was even beyond what she expected, for not only did Jesus heal her, he granted her peace. After all those years of striving, struggling, and battling, she received the true desire of her heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's one of my yeah, favorite stories. I love stories. that story. I do yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, just the just the fact that he turns around. <clears throat> who touched me? Yeah. And you got all the disciples exactly. around going, yeah. What do you mean who touched you? Yeah. 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 Everybody's pressing in mm -hmm. on you. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. how are we supposed to know which one you're talking about? Yeah. You know exactly. the amazing thing is yeah. there's a point in your story where I'm using that that exact uh passage. No, okay. Um but when we get there, okay. I'll uh I'll oh, bring this awesome. back up. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, I always, I always thought that story was amazing because you just have to, if you look at it from the woman's perspective, she in their culture bleeding, you had to be outside. Right, the you couldn't yeah. be in the Nowhere city wall. You had yeah. to be out. She was outcast, and if she walked in, everybody would yell "unclean," and they'd yeah. move away from her. She couldn't yeah. touch anybody. Yeah. So she had been <clears throat> no contact, years without nothing. contact, without physical contact with anybody. Twelve years, and yeah, she heard about years. this guy. <laughs> yep. She heard about this guy, and her faith was strong enough that she didn't care what anybody else thought yeah. at all. Yeah. She went into that she town the knowing. Law. Yeah, she did. She broke the law. Yeah. Because she had to crawl mm -hmm. through that crowd. Oh, so that yeah. means she was touching every single person that was in there. Yes. Yeah. Making her way through, pressing mm -hmm. her way through to get to him. Yep, just so she could touch the bottom the part that, that was, was dirty, dry. filthy, because yeah. they drag on the ground. Exactly. Yeah. And then just he so called, she could touch that. Yeah. And then he called her daughter. Yes. Yeah. And everybody else yeah. was shunning her, and he calls her daughter. Just yeah. Imagine, just imagine how weak she was. Uh, when you I have know, blood yeah. issues, years, you yeah, know yeah. you're going to be years weak. Of bleeding. Yeah. Nonstop. Yeah. And then she, she broke two laws. Uh -huh. The other one was just, the fact that she was bleeding. Number two, she was a woman. Uh, yeah. Oh, she wasn't allowed to just go touch a man in public. Right. 
Yeah, that's you remember that? She that's could only true. touch her children that. and her husband. Exactly. Right. But wow. what the the other picture that is is that that explains ex- the relationships in the church mm-hmm. today. Yeah. You got people that go to church or just around the church. You know, I, I go to church every Sunday. Blah blah mm-hmm. blah blah blah. Um, and I'm not shunning them, but. The other person that has a relationship is the person that goes with a purpose to reach yeah. out and have the that relationship, relationship with Christ. Yeah. And that mm-hmm. was that's the difference. That's yeah. what Christ pointed out right wow. there. There's so much in that story. I know. We could spend so an hour much. on it. I've preached <laughs> that <laughs> many times. I love oh, it. That's um, awesome. Before we go any further, okay. we got to remind people um, oh. about our T-shirts and shirts. Oh, yes. I mean, uh, hats. Yes. Um, <laughs> these these things are great. Uh, they're wonderful. They they look good. They, they keep fit you clothed. Good. The hats <laughs> awesome. The yeah, shirts look great. You know, yeah. So um, and it's definitely good in my wardrobe because it's it's yeah. blue. I love it. I love blue. Um, mm. but you know, for people who call in, you yes. know, we, we'll have we'll, we'll get a chance to pick somebody to um to win either a t shirt or sh- or a hat. hat. Yes. So uh, you guys definitely have to get one of these. So Thank call you. in. Let us know. Yeah. Our number is eight hundred seven two one. Nine three one three, and our local number is nine two eight eight five five nine one one zero. Thank you so Back much, over to John. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for bringing that up. I always forget that point. <laughs> it, this came from outside. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot to. Mama Pat. Yeah. Yep. Well, somebody's got to keep me on track. I, <laughs> I want to preach. I want to preach Jesus. Period. Exactly. <laughs> that's the sermon. That is. That's it. It's all about him, and that's where we go, and that's where my mind goes. So yeah. I, now yeah. for the benediction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <There you go. laughs> all right, I'll stop. All right. <laughs> so, so Terry. So back to Terry. So back yes. to Terry. Yes. <laughs> Let's hear a little about Terry and Terry's world and Terry's life and her road at salvation and what Jesus has done in her life. Okay, well, I was born and raised just outside of Oakland, California. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. (laughs) Rough neighborhood. (laughs) Very rough. (laughs) I was an only child, and uh, my parents wanted to give me a brother or sister, but my mom had complications with the pregnancy and miscarried, and unfortunately, they weren't able to conceive again. Mm -hmm. So I grew up, you know, an only child. My dad had worked for the phone company for a while out there, and he got laid off when I was about 10 or so, and I don't remember exactly when, but... I remember when Dad lost his job, they ended up with a lot of money problems, and uh, they filed bankruptcy, lost their home to foreclosure, and I remember there was a time when I was in high school, we were counting coins just so we had something so we could go to the grocery store to get something to eat, but I never really felt like I did without something. I mean, I always had food on the table, always had clothes on my back, It it was never, I never felt like I was missing something. Right. But uh, thankfully for them, when I was in my late 30s, things started to turn around for them, and they were able to buy their own home, and they recovered from that. Mm. My parents never really talked about religion or God. I, I remember asking my mom, well, what do we believe? And she said, well, we believe in God, but mm. never really took it further. I never went to church, and I never attended Sunday school. When I was 19, I got married to somebody I thought was my Prince Charming, but he was really a frog in disguise. Oh, boy. (laughs) But the best thing I got from him was an introduction to Jesus Christ. We had uh, gone to Reno to get married, and when we got back, we found out that his mother was in the emergency room. So we're driving down to see her, and my car broke down. Hmm. So we got up, and we just, we had no choice but to walk. So when we were walking, we talked, and I said, you know, I want to do something to help. And he said, well, you know, let's pray. And I said, well, to who? What do we say? And he told me about Jesus. And, hmm. and I'm like, yeah, okay. I, and I accepted him right then. Wow. Hmm. So I got baptized, and we started going to church. <clears throat> I helped with VBS and, and, you know, just was getting involved with that. Hmm. But uh, his mom was still sick. And about six months after we got married, she took a turn for the worse. And I remember the night, plain as day, she she kept saying, oh God, oh God. And I realized later that she was actually praying. Uh, She passed away in our living room right in front of my eyes. Wow. And uh, an elder at the church, because we were involved, uh, you know, we had that relationship. And uh, an elder at the church wanted to come over and give us counsel. So we had him over for dinner. And after the meal, he 
decided to try and sell us life insurance. Oh, no. Ugh. So mm. my husband at the time kicked us out and said, okay, well, we're done with church. Wow. wow. Yeah, that's... It's, yeah. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, have, now, I just want to ask a question about as, as far as when you got introduced to Christ. Now, before this moment, before your, your car broke down, had he ever spoken about Christ or... Or anything, or did it just come up out of the blue? It just came up out of, out of the blue, but I had had boyfriends in the past that had mentioned Christ to me, so it wasn't like it was the first time I had ever heard yeah. about him. Okay, but it was the first. That was when it stuck. Yeah, yeah. and it, and it's like that for most of us. I know mm -hmm. for me, it it, it was. Um, it took a lot of people <laughs> wow. to come by. You know, yeah. there was a lot of seeds planted, and a lot of them were yeah. watered. But like I said, Christ will always send that one right. and just. Uh, Bam! It just stuck. Yeah, I, I understand. Okay, this is what I need to go to, and he'll give them exactly what yeah. what they need to give you. So, for you guys out there who keep hearing, you know, the call of Christ, mm -hmm. go ahead and answer it. That's it. Yeah, definitely answer it. I answered it right away. I yeah. was young. I was ten or so. Yeah, I heard it yeah. first time. I heard it. I some, knew it. Some of us don't need to get me. smacked upside yeah. the head. Yeah. As many times I need, to, as I need me. to get smacked up the head later on in life because I didn't, <laughs> wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. Well, it's so. chastisement at that yeah. point. <laughs> <laughs> but totally, yeah. And then the other thing, it's it's kind of like with, with that with that gentleman that came to your house for grief counseling. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it, it's you've got to remember we we live in a fallen world. Oh, Same yeah. thing. And so many people are like, I'm not going to church because mm -hmm. I'll get, you know, I don't want those people to know anything about me. I don't want them to know because I got hurt. Yeah. Or if I go, I'm going to get hurt. And it is all about relationship. That's when right. you When you come together with other people, it is relationship. And eventually, somebody's going to say something or do something that hurts someone else. Yeah. Right? And you've got to focus on what the purpose is. Just like we talked before, Jesus period that's it. it's about him that's right. it doesn't matter what somebody else says or what somebody else does we're all a bunch of mess ups yeah. we're all gonna say the wrong thing do uh -huh. the wrong thing present the wrong thing at the wrong time uh -huh. yes and a lot of us use that as a reason to walk away from we know what is right yeah and i have done it many a times in my past and just not me yeah, but me my too. family i've seen it um somebody in my family gets hurt by somebody somebody <laughs> says something something happens the gossip mill starts going because somebody heard something about somebody else. Yeah. All that stuff that Paul so sternly tells us to knock off. You know, all those books in the New Testament that Paul wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Most of those were letters of the church saying, would you guys knock it off? Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you were supposed to be because you, you were to come together for the purpose of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's, right. That's it. Period. That's what it's about. It's not about a competition. Who looks better? Yeah. Who's got the better outfit? Who who is a higher standing in yeah. church, or who's doing something more than somebody else? Yeah. It's it's all about. It's Christ. your focus. It's a focus. Yeah, it is. But I just that that just struck me when you said that. I've heard that so many times. Somebody in the church said something, and then you're like, "We're done. We're never going right. back. We're yeah. finished." And it's like, so you're gonna throw away. Well, you're not throwing away your salvation, but you're throwing away the gift that Christ is giving you. Yeah, you know that that peace all over because somebody's an idiot. Yeah. And really? we forget that everybody's a sinner, so yeah, we yeah. just need to forgive yeah. and move on. Exactly. And, and for the people who are saying, I don't want to go to church because there's liars there. and there's, oh, well, this, That's this, right. This, well, they're, <laughs> yeah. they're supposed to be there. That's that's where we go. This, the church is a spiritual hospital. Mm -hmm. So when exactly. you, you should be worried if you see if you go into a place and everybody's perfect. Oh, yeah, run. Run, run from that. <laughs> I'm just saying. Exactly. Hey, um, I just want to say the phone number one more time. Hey, if you've experienced any of this or you're going through any of that or you just want to talk to somebody yes. or find out where you can actually get plugged in. Yeah. And, um, well, we're in Lake Havasu, so I'm not sure where you're listening from. Yeah. Um, but if you're in our area or whatever, you can give us a call. We can talk to you, get you plugged in, tell you where, you know, you can you can find resources and information. 800-721-9313. Give us a call. And uh, we'll continue on with Terry here. Okay. Well, after all that, um, I still I knew God was real, and I knew Jesus was my Savior, but I didn't really follow Him, and I didn't know what it meant mm. to be a follower. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I prayed to Him, but I didn't have a real relationship with Him. I didn't even know what that meant. Yeah, can I interrupt? She just sure. looked at me. I guess I can't. <laughs> 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 that is That is so true in so many ways. A lot of people will lead you down the path of just accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
the spirit comes and you're like, yes, this is right. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is, you know, Jesus Christ, what he did for me. He rose from the dead. You know, I have salvation in him. I have to turn my life over to him. And they'll say the, you know, quotation marks here, sinner's prayer, yeah. which uh-huh. is my every day I pray, I'm doing the sinner's prayer. Amen. But, you know, right. <laughs> so, you know, so they say that that prayer of repentance, they turn their lives over to Christ. But then now what? 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 I, <laughs> What do I do now? Yeah. What? You got to be like the woman with the blood issue. Yeah. Right. You got to go after him. You got to go after him. You got to reach yeah. out. That's exactly what it's about. And if you are trying to figure that out, talk to your pastor at your church yes. and say, what do I need to do? Where do I need to go? And I'm, I'm going to plug a, 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 a group right now. Right now, I'm going to plug a group. Ready? Everybody, hold on. I'm going to plug Celebrate Recovery. They're everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, don't close your ears. Everybody's out there going, "Oh no!" All right. <laughs> <laughs> Not those people. <laughs> but, but you got to look at it. It's it's that that program. It's everywhere. It's worldwide. <laughs> you know, and there, that that program teaches you how to walk with Christ. Yeah. And that's what it's about. The bottom line. The bottom line. It t- teaches you how to walk with Christ. Terry. Okay, so in 2003, my husband at the time, he lost his job, and we're, like I said, living out in California, and he didn't. we didn't think that he'd be able to get a job that would replace the income we had, so we decided to move, and the economy out here in Arizona was just booming at the time, so Amen. we figured, okay, well, we'll come out here to Arizona, and we're like, okay, where in Arizona? And so he mm-hmm. sees all these MTV spring break shows and the wild on type shows i think i was on the episode of that Uh oh (laughs) and he was like oh i want to go to the party town so we moved out here (laughs) hello lake havasu yeah so i uh i got a job right away working for a mortgage company but uh when the market did a downturn in 06 i was let go Mm. so uh once we moved out here to arizona i would call my parents at least once a week to get to keep in touch but, you know, after I was let go, of course, I talked to my mom more. But once I started working again, life got busy. I, you know, I sloughed off of that. You no know, weekly yeah. calls went to every other week, then maybe every third. So I, I remember on December 10th, 2006, I took my dogs for a walk. And when I got home, there was a message on my answering machine from my mom. And she didn't call me. I was always the one to initiate the call, so I thought something was wrong. So I called her right back, but she just wanted to chat and told me that she and my dad were watching some movies they hadn't seen for a while, Mm. and they were getting ready to watch E.T. Okay, well, (laughs) we talked for about a half hour, and you know, I can't remember what we talked about, but we both went on our way. And I remember we always ended our call with, I love you. Mm. And I'm so glad we did, because... That, that ended up being the last time I would ever talk to her. Mm-hmm. You know, and how many times do we think, you know, mm-hmm. I should have said. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember parts of the worst time in my life like it was yesterday. Other parts feel like they happened to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Five days before Christmas, I was at work <clears throat> like any other day. Around 10 or so, my grandmother called my phone. I was at work, so I didn't answer it. She called again around noon, and I honestly, I didn't feel like talking to her. I remember thinking to myself, somebody better be dead for her to be, mm. for her to be calling me like that. Mm. After dinner that night, my husband and I sat down to watch a movie. Around 6 or so, my grandmother called me again, and so I answered it, and she said she'd been trying to get in touch with my mom because they had plans for the weekend after to celebrate Christmas together. Grandmom wanted to know what mom and dad wanted for dinner, but my mom couldn't, my grandmother couldn't get my mom to answer the phone. Mm. So I said, okay, well, I'll give her a try. So I called my mom, got the answer machine, and I didn't think too much of it because Mm -hmm. mom got got chronic migraines like I do. So I know there are times I just don't feel like talking on the phone. Right, yeah. So I didn't think too much of it. So I tried to call my dad, and he worked swing shift, and I didn't think too much of him not answering the phone either because I knew he was at work. So when he got a break, I knew he'd call me back. Mm -hmm. Next thing I knew, there was a knock at the front door, and I will never forget the sparkling of the lights that were on our Christmas tree bouncing on that front window. 
There were two of Lake Havasu's finest at the, my home. Mm-hmm. They asked for me, gave me a card with a phone number on it to call. And I said, you need to call this person. And I don't even remember who it was. Mm-hmm. I was on hold for what felt like forever. And finally, the person I was ta- supposed to talk to picked up. And like I said, I can't remember even remember who he was. Mm-hmm. I, the only thing I remember <clears throat> was standing on my front porch, being on the phone, and hearing the words, it appears your father has killed your mother. Mm-hmm. There was a short pause, probably shorter than I remember, in which I thought, okay, Dad, whatever happened, I love you, and we'll get you through this. Mm-hmm. Then the person on the other end of the phone said, and then killed himself. Mm-hmm. I don't remember much else about that night. I was in a state of shock. The only thing that stands out to me was when the officers asked me if there was anyone they could call for me or if anybody at the church they could contact. But I didn't attend attend church, so I didn't have anybody to call. Mm. Well, you can still... The the pain is still there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the sun doesn't go away. No, it, no, it never goes away. It doesn't. And you have days where you're okay, and then other days, just boom, like, like yeah, it was it's, yesterday. Yeah. 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 So I know we reached out and, you know, had to tell the family and call some friends, and people came over, and I just, I remember asking God, why? Mm-hmm. And as time passed and really, reality set in, I got really mad at my dad. I got mad at myself because I didn't call them two days before when I got a Christmas card from them. Mm. But I got mad at God. I was really mad at God for took my parents away and I couldn't talk to him anymore. Mm. And eventually I learned what really happened. And looking back on conversations I had with my mom, I realized dad did what he thought was best for my mom and he didn't want to live without her. Mom had chronic daily migraines, degenerative disc disease in her back. She walked with a cane and took a lot of medication in an effort to relieve her pain. Her quality of life had gone downhill. Dad was depressed and isolated. I knew, like I said, I knew who God was, but I didn't know him. I didn't have a relationship with him. I read the Bible, but I didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. So I thought suicide was the unforgivable sin. Mm-hmm. And I was anguished by the thought of dad being tormented in hell for, the, for eternity. But I was going through my parents' papers and I found my certificate of baptism when I was very young. I was about three months. But more important, I found my dad's baptism certificate. And he was baptized the same day I was. Wow. So dad knew who Jesus was. And I believe in my heart of hearts that certificate was a sign from God that dad was there with him. And I can't tell you the peace I felt with that discovery. Amen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the words of Paul in Romans comforts me as well. Romans ten thirteen says, All who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Those of us who have lost loved ones to suicide can take comfort in the knowledge that if in those last moments before they pass away, if they call on the name of Jesus, they will spend eternity with him. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. That just brought a scripture to my mind as well. Um, one we talked about before is uh, Romans eight thirty eight. Um, many of you have probably heard this before and know what it is, but and I am convinced that nothing, nothing, can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Amen. And that totally gives you that peace. Yeah. Right. You know, because so many people are indoctrinated into that, that, you know, that um, suicide is that unforgivable sin. Yeah. And it's not. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's, the great thing is that <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Nothing. nothing. That means anything that you can think of here yeah, on this earth. Nothing. Nothing can separate mm-hmm. you. Um, I want to go back and, and just kind of point out. Um, one of the highlights, I guess, is something like different signs, you know, because there's always signs, you know, that, yeah. that we can look out for each other right. for whatever the situation may be, whether it be depression or, um, you know, people wanting to have suicidal thoughts. But um, you were saying how and this brings 
brings me back to the lady with the blood issue. Yeah. Um, how your mom had the, the, the chronic illnesses mm-hmm. and things like that, and your dad suffered with depression, mm-hmm. and then the, that the biggest one was isolation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it just it reminds me of this lady again. Yeah. She's so heavy in my heart, but yeah. um, a lot of times, uh, like say for even for me, like mm-hmm. you know, we'll we'll go and we'll try, you know. CR, NA, yeah. AA, AAA, you know, <laughs> NWA, whatever. Yeah. So um, we'll go and we'll try everything but going to Christ. Right. You know, but we do have to come to that realization like the lady did. Like, you know what? Because remember, she, says she she gave all her money to the doctors trying yes. to, you know, get cured yeah. and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. We do the same thing. Like, I'll, you know, we'll give all our money to the doctors or we spend all our time in these groups and whatever, but mm-hmm. until we reach out purposefully right. to Christ, you know, nothing's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, this is why this woman has come up so much today. She's a great example. Yeah. Uh, we have to make that conscious effort to yes. reach out to Christ no matter Absolutely. what. Definitely a good analogy. That's, that's totally true. There's some that we talked about so much in that story. Yeah. There's so, so much in that. <laughs> You know, that's why just, it was on my heart this morning uh, before just, I left. <laughs> yeah, it's so amazing when you start looking at things that are in the Bible. There's you hear these stories over and over again, but you really sit down mm-hmm. and contemplate what he is being said in yes. the story, and uh, and and once you have that relationship with God, He reveals things, yes. and you start to see deeper and deeper into the story. Amen. You know, it's and, and like we said, there's nothing new under the sun. We all go through the same thing yes. every day. Amen. Yeah, we have new technology and there's, you know, new newfangled things that are out there, you yeah. know. But it ain't it, new. It's nothing new. <laughs> it's yes, nothing sir. new. It might be a new electronic gizmo, but it's still you still you. Yes, right. And we're still us Amen. and we still have that sinful nature and we still go through life doing the same things we've been doing for thousands of years, Amen. thousands of years, same thing. But we also remember Christ hasn't changed yes. either. No, he hasn't. And he's still the answer. Yes, yes. he is. Amen. <laughs> yep. He still calls everybody. He wants everybody. Exactly. Hey, um, hey, we'd love to hear from you. You know, uh, give us a call. Uh, 800-721-9313. If you'd like to talk to Terry, especially, she'd love to talk to you. Yes. Okay. So give us a call. So after my parents passed away, my marriage began to crumble and my husband showed his true colors. Mm -hmm. He asked me to do and participate in things I knew were wrong and I knew they were wrong because the Holy Spirit told me so. Mm -hmm. But I thought the Bible said I should be a submissive wife, so I went along with his wishes. Mm -hmm. And I found out later I should have only submitted if it was being asked to do something that lined up with scripture. Right. Otherwise, I should have said no. Amen. That's right. Amen. Yeah, that's. There's a lot there too. You can get into the whole. <laughs> you know, it's it's. Uh, let's see if I can remember what it says now without looking it up. Um, but it's like husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Then. It says women submit to your husbands, right? right. Did, I get, did I get that in the right order? Yeah. So either way, we yeah. have to submit first. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Amen. That is totally the truth. And it's and if your husband is not submitting to Christ mm-hmm. and he's trying to do things or doing things outside of the will of God, and, and you are a godly woman, yeah, you don't need to submit to that type of authority because yeah, your authority is Christ. And I think it's somewhere in Colossians where it says, women submit to your husbands as it is fitting to the Lord. Yes. And it's like, I remember mm-hmm. reading the scripture, submit to your husband, but I didn't finish the verse. Yeah, exactly. And so many people don't. Yeah. You know, you have to, you have to continue it. It's, it's, um, you can't take things out of context, which happens a lot. Right. Uh, yes. You know, you need to read the, read the scripture in whole and in its entirety from those areas. Mm-hmm. Hey, um, I, th- I think I'm going to get in trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> We have um, we have Mr. Mike on the phone. <laughs> hey John. Hey Mike, how you doing? How's Florida? Uh, wonderful. Oh wonderful, boy, wonderful visit. Miss you guys. Yeah. We're all we're all around the table listening to, to the show. Hey okay. everybody. Um, yeah, you and I will talk when I get back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's all right. That's all right. They called me Mini Mike today, so I don't know what yeah, Little probably. Mike, Mini Mike. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, uh, thanks for being on the air, uh, Terry. Um, I I want to. I just want to thank you. I know there's so many listeners out there that you have, you have touched. You know, um, it, it's not easy to talk about this yeah. kind of stuff, mm-hmm. and and uh, but when we bring it to the light, you know, God heals and He heals people and He That's heals right. hearts, and yeah. it's really it's really tough 
Mm-hmm. It, it's really tough to experience if you've not been through uh, a suicide in your family or right. Right. had one of those moments that that is just ground shaking. Um, you you might not understand it, but it it makes you just crawl inside, and it hurts so much, and it hurts so deep. Mm-hmm. And um, and and that's that's right where the devil wants us to stay. Right. Uh, right. So I, you know, I want the listeners to to hear that there is hope out there. That's right. And uh, you know, I I've dealt with um, uh, three suicides in the past two months. Mm. Uh, uh, having to go to um, comfort families and and be with them through through uh, one of the hardest times in their lives and and it's. It, it just breaks a family. It, it breaks you. It's so it does. It's yeah, it does. such a heartache. So um, it's so real. It's become an epidemic. Mm-hmm. And so Terry, thank you so much for 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 talking about this. Oh, thank and, you. And uh, and having people hear that uh, it, it's not the end all. That's you right. right. Exactly. I mean, I, I mean, families can come together mm-hmm. if you allow God to come in the center. And, um, you know, you're never going to forget that. Let's face it. It's not something that, you know, so many people say, well, in time, you'll, you'll get over it. Yeah. Yeah, no, you don't you really don't. get and, over it. And that's not, no. that's not the case. <clears throat> it's not. You're, you're never going to, never going to forget, um, mm-hmm. that situation. It's always going to be with you, yeah. but to try and learn to, uh, cope with it mm-hmm. because uh, you know god wants us to to continue that's right and, uh, and he's got a job for all of us in mm-hmm. a purpose yeah. and the devil's going to tell you see uh, you know you you don't have any purpose and your parents are gone and see so you're stuck with yourself and uh that's 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 a lie yeah exactly. that's, that's a lie i want exactly. the listeners to hear that so that's right it uh, is a lie terry thank you so much oh, thank uh, you. i know listen i know it's not it's not easy when you, you know, when you bring stuff back up, it, it mm-hmm. makes it uh, really just as plain as yesterday. Let's yeah. face it. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you talk about it, uh, you can see, uh, you see everything that you saw and, yeah. and experience those emotions and feelings. It does. But when you, um, like I said, when you bring it to the light and you share with someone else, uh, and that's the whole key. You gotta, you gotta go and tell. You gotta right. tell people yeah. what you're going through, and it's uh, it, it's not easy. But thank you, thank you guys so much. Great right, show, no, thank great you. show. Thanks for being on the air. All right. uh, thank so you for excited. listening. We love you. Okay. We love you guys. Love you too. too. We'll see you next week. Okay, okay Mike. Bye. All right. Bye, okay. Bye. Thanks, Mike. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Yep. I'm gonna get in trouble when I get that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, one of the one of the things as Mike was talking, I was thinking of that one scripture. Um, of course, my brain's not really working, but um, the uh, what 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 um, Satan or what you have meant for evil, he is used. For yeah, what, what Satan meant for bad, yeah. Christ used for good. Yes, exactly, and that's what happens with these things. You know, um, somebody somebody does something, um, committing suicide or taking their life, and that that can I've actually seen that. Where a family was broken apart, yeah. But then that one person took their life or something. So what he meant for evil, you know, yeah. Satan's sitting there glorifying. Yes, I did this. I did this. It ended up bringing that family back together, yeah. And making and that family in the celebration of life ended up all coming back to Christ and turning yeah. their lives over to Christ. Yeah. So it's right back in your face, Satan. It's, it's like, like the story home. of Job. Yes. Yeah. You know? Exactly. And yeah. you got to remember in the beginning of that. Um, <laughs> Whatever we go through, mm-hmm. Satan has to ask permission to put us through something. Yes, yeah. he does. And God is only going to allow us to go through what we can handle, and He's always going to provide a way out. Exactly. So yeah. please don't don't lose hope when you're going through something. You mm-hmm. know, God is doing something. Mm-hmm. Try to remember that God is yeah. doing something. Yeah. And it may seem bleak, but when you come out on the other side, mm-hmm. Christ has a glory, and yeah. you're stronger spiritually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there is that eternal hope in Jesus because yes. we all have that hope. Without him, where do you turn? Yeah. You know, so if you're out there right now and you're going through something and you haven't surrendered your life to Christ, where are you going to turn? Yeah. You've got to turn your life to Christ. Find that hope in him and what he can do for you and then get plugged in. 
we're That's better right. together. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Mike says that every week. We're That's better right. together. Let's not break the cycle. That's it. That's it. All right. Well, to make a long story short, my uh, husband had an affair not once but twice. Mm. He drank to excess and he frequently pointed a loaded firearm at the television. So I left in the middle of the day. I moved out, left a note on the door, and I never looked back. Even though I didn't follow Jesus, I know God was with me. I had a place to stay. I had enough food and money. God provided me in ways I never could have imagined. I learned that what's said in Philippians four eleven through 13 is true. Not that I was ever in need. For I've learned how to be content with whatever I have. Mm -hmm. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it's with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. My divorce went quickly and I got involved with the local church. Mm -hmm. I got baptized again. I got involved with every single Bible study I could Mm -hmm. find. So I got to really know who Jesus is, and I began to follow him, and then my life turned around. I helped to start divorce care at the church I was attending. Mm. I was introduced to a man who helped me launch divorce care, and he ended up being my best friend. Hmm. We got to know each other and eventually started. Who's that? (laughs) (laughs) I'm still looking for him. (laughs) (laughs) We got to know each other, eventually started to date. And four years ago, I married my real Prince Charming. Woo! Ring that bell. (laughs) John better be ringing that bell. (laughs) So he and I have become a ministry team. We've gone on ministry trips together, assisted with baptisms, helped serve, serve communion. It's no wonder when he was approached to co-host Recovery Radio that I would be part of it, too. So, I like they said at the beginning, I am the social media guru. <laughs> and I love doing that. I love serving God in that way. I, I know, love having you do that. Oh, right. thank right. you. I know that God has brought me through the toughest. Means I don't have to. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, the truth comes out. Exactly. <laughs> no, you do a great job. Oh, thank you. I wouldn't be able to compete. So. No. <laughs> I know that God has brought me through the toughest times of my life, and I know he can do it for you, too. You just got to have a little faith and see what he can do for you. Amen. Amen. Hey, I was reminded when you were talking about the scripture, Philippians, mm-hmm. and all I can think about was the part in the serenity prayer where it says, so I could be, be reasonably happy in this life, uh-huh. so mm-hmm. I could be supremely happy with you forever in the next. Yeah. And um, I just, remember I was telling you about the the. the picture that i saw earlier when you was helping set oh, terry yeah. up mm-hmm. yeah and uh i just wrote this thing down it says john plus terry equals better together yes so listen at your testimony and knowing john's testimony uh it's a prime example of being better together mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i want to praise god for what you guys are doing definitely um here with with recovery radio and in the church i get to be part of that and you guys are such a wonderful team. I just want to just thank you. And thank you, Terry, for coming yes. and speaking up. Because like Mike said, you know, there's people that don't have the courage to speak up. And somebody needed to hear that today. So thank you, Terry. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, Terry was definitely a gift from God. Um, Amen. I, the things I had been through. Yeah. Well, like you said, you kind of know my testimony a little bit. And I, yeah. And, um, yeah, when we actually met and we were friends, I actually told her at one point that I don't want to date. I, I'm I'm committing my life to Christ. Yeah. I, I have a bad picker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and when you get involved in relationships, I, I end up putting the wrong focus on the wrong areas yeah. and doing the wrong things. Yeah, we all do. Yeah, and I just didn't want to, I didn't want to ruin what we had and I didn't want to go down that road. But she was different. Yeah. And that's what God opened my eyes to. Yeah. No, she is following me. That's right. With her, it's different. She, you know, this is who I'm going to give you. Yeah. And he did. And it was just like, it was totally, it was, it was actually eye opening. And I was actually shocked. And I actually went into that whole mode of, do I really deserve someone like her? Yeah. It was a yeah. God thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you start going through that hole. I think you're, you're definitely like, the winner in this equation. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Look Terry, what she, we're still look praying what she for you. got and look what I got. I don't know. <laughs> we're, still, we're still praying for Terry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, we need to wrap up the show now. <laughs>
you know that talk that you're going to be having? Yes. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, we're all in trouble. Yeah, we are. <laughs> but I, you know. That's it. That's it. That's it. Live radio, everyone. Live, Live radio. radio. Yeah. Well, just, you know, to add on what we was talking about, <laughs> the, the wife submitted to the husbands. Mm. Remember, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Yes. I think that's a good rule of thumb as a good. husband should have. Yes. Tell his wife, follow me as I follow Christ. Exactly. If I ain't following Christ, then don't follow me. Don't, don't follow, follow me. me. <laughs> yeah. You know, give don't. slap. Yeah. Up the me back side head of the head and that's say, it. hey, where are you going, man? Yeah. It's in the wrong direction. That's why the Lord said you, our wives and our husbands or whatever, they're, mm-hmm. we're, we're help meets. Yes. yes. So we're, we're teammates and you need mm-hmm. to help me. You yes. know, so every now and then just smack yeah. me up beside my head. Mm-hmm. You know, if my wife's listening, my yes, wife does. Me too. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. That's it. My wife lets me know thoroughly I'm yeah. a pain in her butt. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I get called a butthead a lot. Oh, you know. <laughs> but as long as we're still following Christ, hey, she can call yeah. me what she wants. That's it. <laughs> there you go. So for all you single people out there in the world, that's one of the things he says in there, and we, we kind of scoff at it in, in today's society and our things. It's do not be unequally yoked. Yeah. Because yeah. you are never, ever going to bring somebody up, but they're going to pull you down. Yeah. So if you're a follower in Christ, you get involved with somebody who's not, whether you're uh, a boy or a girl, man or woman, which, whichever way. You know, if a girl gets involved with a man and he's not a believer, he's going to You can't pull, change him. You know, can't. You can't, yeah. you can't Only do it. God can. Yep. That's right. And for men, so, I know it's so it simple. Yeah. So simple to fall away for a man. You find a woman, you get enthralled with her beauty, and if she's not a follower of Christ, guess what you're not going to do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're going to yep. do whatever you can to win that woman well, over, and if wa- walking away from Christ is what you need to do to do that, you will. Yeah. You don't. Don't even don't, don't be a Samson. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah there's exactly. a perfect, <laughs> great perfect example. example of that. Yes. Perfect example of that. that well, is totally. women are just as bad. You can't change a woman either. So. No, you can't. You can't change your partner. All you can worry about is yourself. That's right. And that's what you need to look at, and that's what you need to work on. Remember, it's all about Christ. Mm-hmm. Period. Amen. That's it. No period. matter what situation we're in, it's all about Christ. That's it. He has all. He's holding all the wild cards. He's yes. got it all. He does. You know, so he does. I, Thank him for him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, Terry, thank you so much for uh, coming in and sharing your testimony with yes. us. Yes. Oh, thank you. It, it's hard. I, I know, um, like Mike said, it's really hard to bring that out and talk about those things. Um, it I, is. You know, even I even get choked up when, yeah. when she goes through that. So it's really hard for me even to hear it. Yeah. Because I have so much love for my wife that when she's hurting, I hurt. Yeah. So I yeah. feel that hurt and I don't yeah. like it. So yeah. it's, it's really hard to get through. It's all right. Um, so. so anyway, uh, I guess that's the show for the day, isn't it? Yes. We're, we're yeah. down to the end. Down to the end. Yep. Oh, boy. And I All promise right. you I didn't touch the clock. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was watching it today. I didn't see anything, anything happen. Yeah. I, I, do you think I can goes see, by fast. Do you think it I can see has happened is our producer's been yelling through the window at me, which I have no idea what she's saying, and Mike's well, you're wearing I don't know. I just I don't know what's going on. I, I, I just know after this I'm in trouble somewhere. I did something. Uh, <laughs> no, well, uh, I don't think so. Before we go let you get in trouble, let's, okay. uh, let me thank the sponsors one thank more you. time. Thank you, Barry. Much. You knew so, where I was going. It's all good, bro. See, we're better together, brother. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a Hana Pokemon. <laughs> 3269 Maricopa Avenue here in Lake Havasu City. Uh, we have Ace Pest Control. You can contact them at 928-680-0988 and on the web at acepestcontrolaz.com. Uh, and finally, we have Sunshine RV located at 2995 Maricopa Avenue and you can contact them at 928-855-6648. And also, I want to you know, yeah. point out to people who you know may not have these businesses, we have people that just give out of mm-hmm. their hearts and their, and yeah. their own money to, to recovery rate. Video. Yeah, and we thank um, Hilltop Church. They get Definitely. our shirts and hats taken care of. So, uh, and everybody else, thank you for your prayers and all. Mike's that you do. got a shirt, so we don't have to. You know, yeah, we don't. Yeah, have to Mike. Yeah, on. we're yeah. not. Mike, you can't win a shirt. He might need a new one though. He's probably worn that one out. I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe the neckline. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, I'm in trouble with you. There you go. That's it. Hey, and we have several ways you can reach out to us during the week because we're not here all week. We're only here for this hour on Saturday mornings. For Terry. Now. Terry, you're a social media person. <laughs> yeah. What is the best way people can get a hold of us during <laughs> well, the week? <laughs> the best way is our website, Recovery Radio LHC. Dot com. Uh, there's links to our email, recoveryradiolhc at gmail.com. We're on Facebook, Recovery Radio, Instagram, Recovery Radio LHC, 
Twitter, Recovery Radio LHC, and YouTube, Recovery Radio LHC. Awesome. That's a lot of places you can get a hold of us. And you can also, the shows are recorded. Yes. Um, so we do have some of the shows up there. So if you missed one, you'd like to go back and listen to YouTube. them. YouTube. You find there. Yes, they're That's on YouTube. YouTube. And we also have them streaming on, on the, the website. website. On the website. Oh, yeah. there, so you can hear them. You got it. Oh, so we'd love to hear from you. And next week, our special guest is going to be the one we all know and love. You hear every day on Treehouse One, Miss Debbie. Debbie. If you're listening, Miss Debbie, you are on for next weekend. So she has to be. I won't be here. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Oh, all man. right. <laughs> I will be at the funeral home. Oh yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. burying my mother-in-law. My next mother-in-law. Weekend, so. Yeah. Right. And our prayers are with you. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Definitely be in our thoughts during that time when the show. Appreciate it. Okay. Very much. Okay. And closing prayer. All right. Um, Father, we just want to thank you one more time, Lord. You're so awesome, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to lift you up this hour, Lord, the fastest hour in the world. Mm -hmm. But we thank you, Lord, even if it was just a minute. Thank you for the time that you give us to lift you up and let people know that, Christ, you have you have already overcome what we are going through and what we're going to go through. Help us to always remember, Lord, that we can lean on you at any time, Lord. You don't have closing hours, Lord, that we have to wait till a certain time of the day to come to you, Lord. But. 24 7 lord we can come to you lord and bring our problems and there's not a problem too small or too big that you want to handle for us so lord we thank you we thank you for the blood you shed for the life you laid down the life you picked up and what you've given us thank you for giving us recovery two thousand years ago help us to realize that we have it lord give you all the praise honor and glory in jesus christ's name and all his children said amen amen amen, amen. thank you so much robert hey and uh this is john closing out for today and keep coming back and remember we are better together yes thanks <laughs> goodbye from now from recovery radio where we have hope for you